Hi. Welcome to Prime Recap. When Sid is captured by a Tyrannosaurus, Manny and the rest of the gang must face numerous dangers on a journey to the center of the Earth to rescue their friend. Today we will recap the story of the movie, Ice Age 3, from 2009. After discovering that he is not the last of his kind, Manny decides to start a family with Ellie, who is now expecting the couple's first baby. After a long gestation period, the mammoth feels the baby kicking and Manny thinks it is about to be born, desperately running towards Ellie along with Sid to deliver the baby, but when they reach the female, they realize that it was just a false alarm and it is not time yet. Frustrated, the other animals go away and leave the couple alone to talk, causing Ellie to lecture her husband and ask him to calm down, because he is making the whole gang worried. Wanting to smooth things over, Manny decides to surprise his wife and sets up a hidden playground, taking her to see the place where their son will grow up. During the excursion, Sid also explores the place and tries to touch a snowman, but Manny kicks him out, saying that the playground is only for children. Away from the group, Diego is spying a deer and begins to chase it, running after his prey at top speed, but the tiger is out of shape and begins to feel ill, almost passing out due to lack of air. As the saber-tooth regains his breath, the supersonic deer approaches and starts teasing him, saying that his hooves are burning with such speed. Frustrated, Diego goes back to camp and doesn't even pay attention when Manny tries to talk to him, making Ellie suspect that something is wrong and asking her husband to talk to him. Out of options, Manny obeys his wife and goes to Diego, who begins to vent, saying that he is tired of playing with children and that he needs to be a great predator, but the mammoth thinks that he doesn't want contact with his son and gets extremely offended, encouraging him to leave the gang to move on with his life. As Manny walks away, Sid goes to Diego and tries to convince him to stay in the family, but the Sabretooth realizes that things are changing and it's time for everyone to split up, letting the mammoth form his own herd. Feeling lonely, the sloth begins to wander through the forest while trying to make friends with other animals, but ends up driving everyone away with his strange personality. Trying to stay positive, Sid looks at the ground while saying that at least he is still handsome, but the ice breaks over his feet and he ends up falling into a frozen cave. Alone and afraid, the sloth explores the place while looking for someone else, finding three apparently abandoned eggs that he decides to adopt as his babies. Now that he has a family, Sid picks up the three eggs and takes them to the surface, rolling them through the snow to the rest of the gang, but halfway there, he falls on one of the eggs that plummets down the hill, forcing the sloth to drop the other two to run after the escaped omelette. During the chase, Sid trips over a rock and manages to hold the egg in midair. But just when he thinks things have calmed down, the other two roll past him, forcing the sloth to continue down the hill to rescue his children. At top speed, the mammal manages to overtake the eggs and catch the second, but ends up being thrown against a log and uses the wood to surf through the snow. Out of control, Sid passes through a hollow tree and manages to get the last egg, but at that very moment, he ends up jumping over a rock that hurls the sloth and his children into the air. Even with all his efforts, Sid only manages to catch two eggs and the third one ends up falling off the cliff, however. Luckily Ellie is at the bottom and manages to save the egg by catching it with her trunk. Desperate, Sid runs to the mammoth couple to introduce his new children, but Manny does not support him and says that he must return the eggs as soon as possible, because during the few minutes he has them, the sloth has almost destroyed them. Very saddened, Sid moves away from the group and begins to look for a shelter to stay with his babies while a storm is rolling in. After some time, the sun finally appears in the sky and the sloth gets to see his future children inside the egg, making him even more excited, but while he is happy with his parenthood, the real mother finally returns to the nest and realizes that her babies have been taken away deciding to come to the surface to rescue them. The next morning, Sid wakes up and realizes that the three eggs have hatched, giving life to three little T-Rex babies that adopt the sloth as their mother. On his first day of parenthood, he spends the entire morning playing with the miniature tyrannosaurs, teaching them to bathe themselves and take their afternoon nap. After resting, the sloth decides to take the babies to the playground Manny has built and ends up leaving the entrance open, allowing the other babies to enter the playground to play. But since they have never been socialized, the tyrannosaurs don't know how to deal with the other children and even devour some of them, forcing Sid to beg them to spit the animals back out. Chaos spreads throughout the playground which is totally destroyed, leaving Manny so furious that he throws the sloth and his babies out of the group. But in the middle of the argument, the ground begins to shake and a female tyrannosaurus appears on the horizon, almost trampling a tiny beaver. Knowing what she wants, Manny tries to talk Sid into returning the babies, but the sloth has already left, running for cover under a rock. Even though they are afraid, the other animals remain motionless while the mother Tyrannosaurus searches for her young, but a porcupine cannot keep calm and runs off in desperation, spreading chaos around the place. Since she is not hunting, 
the female ignores all the animals and continues to look for her children, passing by where Sid is just as one of the babies begins to cry. Upon hearing the sound of the cubs, the female removes the rock with her mouth and watches the sloth while Manny tries to convince him to leave the cubs, but Sid insists that they are his children and ends up being captured by the T-Rex, who takes him back to the nest. Following the female's trail, Manny arrives at the cave entrance and asks Ellie to return while he goes to rescue Sid, but she refuses and decides to go ahead, exploring the structure of the cave until they cross a bridge made from the skeleton of a dinosaur. On the other side, they arrive in a large underground forest with its own fauna full of animals from the Cretaceous period. While the group admires the discovery, an Ankylosaurus appears behind them and almost hits Manny with its tail, causing the mammoths to run away and leave the possums behind. As a defense mechanism, the marsupials decide to play dead and are only not crushed by the Ankylosaurus tail because Diego arrives to save them. Trapped against the cliff, Diego tries to roar at the dinosaur to get it to back off, but the Ankylosaur is an extremely territorial animal and decides to confront the predator by roaring back. Luckily, the armored monster gets its tail caught between the rocks and Ellie has the idea of using some plants to attract a Brachiosaurus, surfing along the creature's body until it reaches the lower part of the forest. Still, they are not safe and are quickly surrounded by other dinosaurs, until suddenly, a weasel appears at the top of a tree and jumps into their midst, throwing some strange fruit that explodes in the dinosaur's faces, distracting them while he throws a smoke bomb on the ground and makes them all disappear. Nearby, Manny and the others come out of cover and the weasel introduces himself as Buck, asking what they are doing there. Upon learning that Sid has been taken by a dinosaur, the demented creature with the eye patch says that he is gone and that they should go back to the surface. But Diego finds the Tyrannosaurus tracks and Ellie says that they can't give up on finding him. To help the group, Buck says that the dinosaurs take the newborns to the lava falls and that the sloth must also be there, but the path will not be easy and they will need to cross the jungle of suffering and go through the abyss of death to reach the plates of woe. Thinking the weasel is completely out of his mind, Manny thanks him for the information and says they will go it alone from now on, but Buck replies that only he can handle Rudy, another dinosaur even bigger than Mama Tyrannosaurus. Despite the warnings, Manny ignores the animal and decides to continue following the footprints without help. But just ahead, they arrive in a forest of carnivorous plants that begin to observe them. Ellie realizes that something is wrong and tries to talk to her husband, but he doesn't even let her finish talking and assumes that she is hungry and goes to get some fruit from the top of the hill. But as soon as he touches the plant, several vines appear and capture both him and Diego, putting them in their mouths and beginning the process of digestion. To save them, Ellie approaches them saying that she will remove the plant by its root and Buck appears to say that this will cause it to close forever, keeping them both trapped there for all eternity. As the plant fills with a digestive acid, Manny and Diego get closer and closer to death, forcing the weasel to enter the plant to save them. Inside, the animal dives to the bottom and removes the plug that protects the plant's root, revealing two threads that it can cut. Since he doesn't know which one will release them, Buck decides to cut the red wire and the carnivorous flower fills with acid almost instantly, compressing more and more until it almost crushes them. Even pressed up against Manny, Buck manages to make one last effort and stretches his arm until he cuts the blue wire, causing the plant to explode because of the high pressure. After the weasel's heroic act, Ellie is convinced that he knows how to survive and asks for help to find Sid, who at this point finally wakes up and realizes that he is still in the tyrannosaur's mouth. A few meters ahead, the female puts her young on the ground and picks up the sloth to throw it away, but it tries to hold on to a vine that breaks in two, which ends up generating an elastic force that throws it into the mother dinosaur's nose. Annoyed, she sneezes at Sid and starts trying to bite him, but her cubs decide to intervene and defy their own mother to protect their sloth father from being devoured. Back with the group, Manny and the others finally arrive at the abyss of death and asks them not to breathe in the toxic gases while he prepares the transport to the other side. With everything ready, Ellie and Buck cross the abyss inside a ribcage, and the rest of the herd is left for the second trip, but due to the combined weight, the rope does not hold and they get stuck in the middle of the way, needing to hold their breath to survive. After a few minutes, they can't take it anymore and start inhaling the toxic gas, discovering that the air is actually filled with helium, which leaves them with super thin voices and causes them to fall about laughing. Concerned, Buck approaches them and tries to convince them to stop laughing, showing them dozens of skeletons that have literally died from laughing so hard. To save them, the weasel approaches them to try to pull them to the other side, but Manny starts tickling him, which ends up inhaling the laughing gas, leaving Ellie alone to pull them all out. A few miles down the road, Sid realizes that the babies are hungry and brings them dozens of vegetables to feed themselves, but since they are carnivores, they reject the vegan diet and get salivating when Mommy Tyrannosaurus brings them a bird. 
Since the animal is still alive, the sloth does not allow his children to eat and throws the bird from the abyss, but it cannot fly and ends up being captured by a pteranodon. To feed her babies, the mother T-Rex goes to the nearest bush and pulls out a huge chicken thigh, but just as they finish eating, the female hears Rudy approaching and leaves in desperation before he arrives. Back in the group of mammoths, Buck suggests camping for the night and takes the opportunity to tell the story of how he got his eye patch. Much younger, the animal came face to face with Rudy, who drove his claws into the mammal's eye, forcing it to run to the top of a tree in order to escape, but the great white dinosaur was not satisfied yet and went after him, devouring Buck above the clouds. Stuck in the dinosaur's mouth, the weasel grabs the uvula and starts wiggling around until it gets enough momentum, jumping out and knocking out one of Rudy's teeth, which he used to make the knife he keeps to this day. After a good night's sleep, they wake up the next morning and continue their journey until they find the place where Sid tried to feed the babies. Observing the vegetables and carcasses on the ground, Buck assumes that the Tyrannosaurus attacked Sid who fought back with a piece of broccoli, turning the predator into a vegetable. Thinking it's crazy, Manny argues that his friend is not violent and the conspiracy weasel tries to come up with a second theory, but Diego interrupts him saying that he has managed to find the trail again. Following the footprints, they finally arrive at the Plates of Woe and walk towards the falls, but while walking through the place, Ellie begins to feel the pains of childbirth and her grunts end up waking up a group of velociraptors trying to climb the rocks. Because of their weight, the plates begin to give way and the female becomes separated from the rest of the group, becoming an easy target for predators. Not far away, Sid is heading towards the lava falls when he falls off the tail of the Tyrannosaurus, being left behind and found by Rudy. In a panic, the sloth lets out a screech that can be heard from the boards, which forces the group of mammals to separate into two groups. While Buck and the skunks go to rescue Sid, Manny stays at the bottom to distract the predators while Diego goes up to protect the female. While chasing the Velociraptor, the Sabretooth starts to feel ill just as when he was hunting the deer, but this time, he manages to resist the shortness of breath and catches up with the predator, throwing it off the plates. Further down, Manny crushes everyone who tries to approach his wife, mercilessly eliminating them, but since he is outnumbered, the mammoth decides to use the terrain to his advantage and hits several headbutts into the trees, causing the rocks to give way and crush the Velociraptors. A few miles ahead, Sid runs desperately and ends up trapped against the lava, but luckily for him, Rudy's weight causes the ground to split into several slabs that begin to float in the magma. With this, the predator has no more way to reach him and decides to retreat, but the sloth is still not safe, as it is heading straight for a lava waterfall. Just then, Buck arrives at a nearby cliff and grabs the skunks, leaping toward the abyss. Just when they think this is the end, the weasel grabs hold of a pterodactyl's tail and manages to tame it, guiding the flying creature toward Sid. As they approach, the trio ends up passing a group of pterodons that start chasing them. Using a vine as a leash, Buck makes numerous maneuvers near the lava to avoid the predators, but this does not work, and the opossums are forced to grab some fruit to use as ammunition. Using their tails as a bow, they throw their projectiles at the winged predators and manage to knock most of them out, but as they are approaching Sid, one of the predators appears from above and manages to hit the pterodactyl in midair, knocking him unconscious. In freefall, Buck goes to the pterosaur's head and begins mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing on the winged lizard, waking it up moments before they crash to the ground. With the help of the skunks, the weasel manages to use the reins to steer the pterodactyl upwards and save Sid just as he falls from the waterfall, carrying him towards the group while the Tyrannosaurus babies watch from the cliff. Back on the plates of woe, Manny and Diego manage to eliminate the last velociraptors just as Ellie gives birth to their first child, whom they decide to name Mulberry. At this point, Buck returns with Sid and everyone gathers to celebrate the arrival of the baby and the success of the rescue mission, returning to the cave shortly thereafter. Once they arrive at the place, Manny thanks Buck for his help and invites him to join the gang, but before he can show up, Rudy comes out of the cave and starts chasing them, cornering the mammals quite easily. To save his companions, Buck catches the predator's eye and shows him that he still has his tooth, annoying Rudy and allowing the rest of the group to return to the surface. However, Manny refuses to leave him alone and sets off to help the crazy weasel while Ellie takes shelter in the cave. Just ahead, Buck is running away when he ends up being trampled by Rudy, but manages to get through the space between the predator's fingers and comes out completely unscathed. Wanting his tooth back, the dinosaur hits his tail on Buck who launches him into the air, causing him to almost be swallowed by the predator, but Diego manages to save him at the last second. Working as a team, the mammals take some vines and tie Rudy's entire body together, knocking him completely immobilized, but just as they are retreating, Sid runs into the ropes and frees the predator. Just as Rudy is about to deliver the final blow, 
Mama Tyrannosaurus shows up to save the sloth, landing a headbutt so hard that it pushes the demented dinosaur off the cliff. With that, Sid says goodbye to his babies and they can finally leave back to the surface, but as they are crossing the bridge made with the dinosaur skeleton, Buck hears Rudy's roar and realizes that his great rival is still alive. Knowing that he cannot abandon him, the weasel bids farewell to the Sabretooth and asks him to take care of the rest of the gang, tearing down the bridge and returning to the underworld to tame Rudy. Finally, the mammals return, to the surface, and Manny talks to Diego about him leaving, but the tiger replies that he has changed his mind and will protect the herd until the end, allowing everyone to live happily and peacefully while little Amora grows more and more each day. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.